Hello and welcome to Game Sack. A lot of people have been wanting an update to the old Room Tour episode, which is well over 10 years old now. Back then, I thought that episode was so cool with no talking and nothing but music and occasional graphics and stuff. But this one, I wanted it to be a little beefier so you can hear my lovely voice throughout. Hmm, not sure if that's a good idea or not. Anyway, my game collection isn't one of the most impressive ones that you're going to find on YouTube, certainly, but I have some decently cool stuff here and there. And let's start with the room that you see behind me, which is actually over there, across from that wall. That's right, we're starting off in the retro game room. Like I basically said, this is the room you see behind me in my talking head segments and often where I shoot the end skits. It also happens to be where I keep the majority of my games. Burglars take note. That Afterburner poster is something I ordered from Sega back in the Master System days. I think it was $14 plus shipping. The equipment in here consists of a Toshiba 20 AF45 TV, which is one of the best consumer TVs you can get for retro gaming. Though some versions of this model I guess need to be modded to reduce the edge enhancement. Not mine though. I also have a couple of mini disc recorders, a Sony AVR, a JVC video switcher, and two Sony tower speakers. The artwork hanging on the walls is stuff I drew myself back in the day. I feel that it's appropriate in here. Surrounding the room are shelves holding, guess what, retro video games. Lots of shelves and lots of games. So well, we might as well take a look at each shelf. Starting at the tippy top, I have a lot of boxes for various consoles and peripherals. Basically anything that would fit up there between the bookcase and the ceiling. I figured this would be a decent place to put some stuff like this, and I think it works well. The next row down, you see that I have a decent but probably not impressive amount of PlayStation long boxes. These are pretty cool, and I'd love to have them all. Going around, you'll see some Japanese Mega Drive games, followed by the first row of Genesis games, all of which are in alphabetical order. By the way, if you see any game that's not in alphabetical order in this video, let me know and I will fix it. Unless, of course, there's a reason that I place them like they are. Anyway, we see more Genesis games and we end the first row with the beginning of my exciting 32X collection. The next row down after that, well, you can pretty much see what it is. I tried to get everything captured in this video so that you could pause it and see what games I have, but there might be some instances here and there where not everything is crystal clear or big enough on screen to see. It was also tough to keep glare completely off of the games in the few places, which you might see when you're trying to read game titles in this video. If that's the case, sorry, I tried. Anyway, I often get asked how much I still collect these days. The answer is, well, not really a whole lot. In fact, it's pretty tough to collect. It's nearly impossible to find good deals these days as people know what they have and thrift stores are usually dead zones as far as retro games. Not only that, but stupid YouTube channels like GameSack artificially inflate game prices. Anytime GameSack says a game is good, prices go up. Yeah, it pisses me off. I wish GameSack didn't exist so that prices could stay low. Stupid GameSack. It sure is easy to blame YouTubers for increasing game prices. Yep, people enjoyed the content and keep watching said YouTubers. Hmm, what a conundrum. Thankfully, there are a lot of other ways to play retro games these days. My favorite are EverDrives and optical drive emulators, which let me play games using the real hardware. These are reliable enough these days that it's really curved my actual collecting. But maybe you'd rather emulate or use solutions like Mr. or RetroPie. Whatever works for you is best. Just keep in mind that what's best for you doesn't mean that everyone else should be doing the same exact thing. Just let people live, man. That said, I'll never pass up a good deal for a game that's in good condition, and I like that new games are still released physically for these old consoles as well. Anyway, towards the bottom of these bookcases, I put various consoles and peripherals simply because I have the room. That's right, lots of room still for more games should I ever be able to get them. In fact, I'd love to have more physical Saturn, PC Engine, TurboGrafx-16, Sega CD, and PlayStation games. This isn't the only bookcase I have in the room. I also have one full of Sega Master System games. I have the full US set, except for Buster Douglas Knockout Boxing, which is ridiculously expensive these days. And a couple of these, like Moonwalker, might be European. I think I'm okay with that. I'm just happy I have so many Master System games since it's the first console I ever bought. 
On the bottom two shelves of this bookcase, I have various games for portable systems like the PSP, Vita, DS, 3DS, Lynx, and whatnot. Portable games are less important to me as I much prefer playing on the TV where I can be physically comfortable. I'm not usually very comfortable when I play portable devices as they were intended. But this is not all. I also have this little nook with more bookcases and shelves. On these three shelves in the middle, I keep various consoles and peripherals that look nice, but mainly the different lenses that I use with the camera. A few of them aren't on this shelf because they're attached to various cameras in the other room right now. I also have wireless microphones, which I only ever use as a very last resort. I prefer shotgun mics for pretty much everything. I mean, I think my voice sounds pretty good here, don't you? On the bookcase over to the left, I have various stuff. It's almost random, but it's all useful, at least to me. At the bottom of this, I have a few controllers and empty boxes, and over here is the actual game sack that you see drop in the intro of every single episode. Well, most episodes. On the shelf over to the right, I have actual video games. This is where my GameCube, PlayStation 2, original Xbox, and Xbox 360 games all live. Yeah, I know, I don't really have very many GameCube games, do I? I think I was more of an original Xbox fan at the time since it had the best graphics and it had actual surround sound. I'm surprised that I have this many Xbox 360 games if I'm being honest. Below these, I have various empty boxes for the Genesis, 32X, Super NES, Super Famicom, and Turbo Graphics games. I much prefer plastic clamshells to the cheap and ugly cardboard boxes, so I put most of those games in one and printed out some artwork. But of course, I could never toss the original boxes. On the bottom shelf, I have the original box to the Genesis I purchased back in 1989, as well as some loose portable cartridges for some reason. And that's the retro game room for you. Up next is the room that I'm actually sitting in right now, a room that I've dedicated to being a studio. On the other side of the wall from the game room is the studio where I do all of the voice work, including the drivel you're listening to right now. I also do the talking head segments of the show set against a green screen. Look how green that is. That's right, I'm not actually sitting in the game room for those segments. There's not enough room to actually get that shot. This room is acoustically dead, well, pretty dead anyway, so it's great for recordings. This is achieved with sound absorption panels, a drop ceiling, and thick carpet. I have lots of lights in here too, most of which point at the green screen. But there's actual stuff in here. In fact, I have two bookcases full of stuff. On top, I have some cool joysticks and also a Goemon plush from Victor Ireland. This was made when Working Designs was localizing mystical ninja Goemon Zero for the PS2, which unfortunately never got a release. There's also the Sonic plush from the old Sonic Doom Halloween skit that we did like forever ago. On the left bookcase, I have a bunch of old cameras that I've used dating all the way back to, I wanna say the mid nineties. Lots of memories with these. Below that, an Xbox 360 box, a Saturn mission stick, and an old component switcher. The right bookcase has even more odds and ends, including old upscalers and capture devices, my old Neo Geo MVS, and even an old DV VCR. The bottom shelves basically have game console boxes because they could fit and they look nice, but over on the left, that's my mini disc collection. I used to be really big into recording mini discs and these contain a lot of game music, but make no mistake, I also have a bunch of real music on these. Lastly, there's a closet in which I have a bit more crap. There are shelves in here which I have a bunch of random stuff, all my light guns as well as the Dreamcast keyboard, and on the bottom shelf is my Dr. V64 for the Nintendo 64. It's basically best described as a prehistoric EverDrive. Just outside of those two rooms, I have yet another bookcase under the stairs. I actually keep a decent amount of stuff back here. On the top shelf is Clay Joe from the Claymation episode, if you remember, which I really hope you do. That one took a lot of work. The top two shelves are also home to all of my arcade PCBs. I keep them in these free boxes that the post office gives out expecting you to mail stuff. This is probably not the best way to store them, but eh, it works. Down below these is a shelf full of random stuff, more portable game boxes, and this. 
Yeah, this is a rapid fire unit for the Sega Master System and I had to order it from Sega like I did with the Afterburner poster. I guess it was released at retail too. I like that it adds rapid fire to any controller, even the light gun. Did Nintendo have anything like this? On the bottom is my Evercade collection of physical cartridges. This little system has been surprisingly resilient and they're still coming out with new carts. I'm honestly impressed that they keep coming out with new stuff. At the back, I have a collection of various CRTs, both large and small. A couple of them are actually VGA monitors. And no, that is not a crack on the screen, it's a reflection of a tripod leg. But I'll be damned if I give up any of these CRTs. Out here is a bigger room with an entertainment setup. This has a 65 inch LG C8, which is a pretty good TV. This room also has an exciting brown couch. The sound system in here is strictly stereo, and honestly, it sounds fantastic. And there is a subwoofer. Gotta be real, it's not really needed with the full range speakers that I have. It almost sounds better without the subwoofer. Over by that is a slider that's getting a lot of use in this episode, as well as a little spinny table thing. In this room is my childhood Millennium Falcon, which was found at my grandmother's house as it was being cleaned out. This toy required a lot of cleaning itself, but hey, lots of memories here. The table opens up to store stuff, but I really don't keep anything in there at the moment. I like that it does it, though. You might be wondering what the hell this white table is. No, it's not for at-home gynecology, it's a light table. It can be used to get cool-looking shots of various things like the TurboGrafx CD here. I've gamed in this room a little bit, but I usually don't. All right, next up is my so-called home theater room. I really enjoy this room a lot, but I've gotta be honest, it's kind of ugly. There's way, way too much brown, which in turn makes it look even worse on video. Also, for whatever reason, the camera makes my TV look a lot smaller than I perceive it as in real life. It's just how it goes. This was also the most difficult room to shoot, moving the camera and the slider around, all the crap that's in there. Oh well, I hope you enjoy these last couple of rooms. This room is where the modern consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X live. The room features a newer 77-inch LG C1, and for the most part, it's a great TV. I really like it. Oh, and I have another exciting brown couch in here. I don't know why that's a thing with me, but apparently it is. I've got the full gamut of surround sound in this room, including four height speakers, seven full-range lower speakers, and not one, not two, but three subwoofers. That's a total of 14 speakers. The room is mostly acoustically treated so that it doesn't sound like ass. I hate things that sound like ass. Insert your own fart joke here. Also, the center TV stand is custom, but honestly, I think I should take it a step further and paint it black. Yeah, I didn't make the room look super nice like a literal movie theater or anything, but when the lights go down, that stuff doesn't really matter anyway. And the sound is absolutely superb, though I always feel I could probably make it even better. The table has drawers that can hold controllers so that everything isn't always laying on the tabletop. I like that. Anyway, I have my movies in this room since it's where I do my movie watching and I've been collecting 4K Blu-rays for the past few years now. In fact, when I go back and watch a regular Blu-ray, it can be a little weird at first. You kind of do get used to looking at the 4K stuff if I'm being honest. Still, the Blu-rays don't look bad at all and they're still light years ahead of DVD. I really do love watching movies again and again and again. It's definitely one of my other passions. My PlayStation 5 games also live in the same bookcase, and as you can see, I don't have very many yet. Below those are my Wii and my Wii U games. I have 19 Wii U games and 18 PlayStation 5 games so far. I don't know, I think my PS5 collection is gonna end up surpassing my Wii U collection. In the other back corner of the room are all my games for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Switch, and Xbox One slash Series X, since they're basically the same thing, I guess, since the Series X doesn't really have many exclusives. As you'll see, I kind of went crazy on PlayStation 4 games, more so than I usually do for modern consoles anyway. I have well over 100 PS4 games, and I'm sure I haven't purchased my last game on the console. When a game was multi-platform, I usually opted for the PS4 version. I mean, why wouldn't I during that generation? 
I kind of always forget about the Xbox One slash Series X as well as the games I have for it. Honestly, the system seems to lack an identity. I officially have more Switch games than Wii U and PlayStation 5, but I don't see the Switch collection growing much, if any more. Lastly is the office, and I spend more time in here than in any other room in the house. Well, except maybe the toilet. I'm kidding. Here's where I edit GameSack as well as anything else I edit. It's also where I make idiotic posts on Twitter, imbibe in carbonated beverages as I work, and even make sure my bills are paid. For my computer equipment, I'm currently using a beefed up Mac Studio, and attached to it is an NVMe SSD, is that how you say it? Anyway, that's my editing drive. It's quite fast. In fact, I have 10 external drives attached, and a Blu-ray burner as well, because why not? Behind my desk is another desk. This is where collaborators who bring their own equipment can work. It is very helpful to have people in the same room when you're collaborating on a project. To the left of this desk are some shelves holding various things like writable optical discs, old VHS tapes I made, and backup hard drives. The Tonma plush is from Victor Ireland, and it's super cool. He guards my old VHS tapes. Up here, I have the analog pocket, mister, and switch ready to go if needed, and they sometimes are needed. This room is also where I play and capture most of my gameplay footage as well. I have a lot of consoles, all hooked up simultaneously, and all I have to do is power them on and their video and audio is automatically routed to the TV and capture device for recording. I have most of the common systems that I use out here, but I don't have room for everything. But all of these use HD RetroVision component cables and they go through one of two G-Comp switchers. Actually, the Dreamcast and the original PlayStation are both modded to use HDMI. I use a RetroTINK 5X upscaler before capturing so the footage looks super nice, but I think I'll probably be replacing it with a RetroTINK 4K in the future. Some consoles I have to place on my desk as I capture, so I have an HDMI cable there waiting and ready. I usually look at the Sony PVM CRT as I game, unless it's an HDMI system, and it's been holding up pretty well after all of these years. I really do love this thing. I just wish there were enough for everyone, you know? They are hard to get, especially these days. The second monitor is really only used to monitor the game capture as it shows me exactly how the capture looks. Quite helpful, at least for what I do. Over here, I have a little compartment that's meant for shoes, but I actually keep game controllers in them. It's quite handy. If I remember, I think I ordered it from Home Depot. Below that are a bunch of accessory drawers containing lots of different things. In fact, I have a ton of drawers in this room. I recommend having many drawers, they're very helpful. Back over here is another set of shelves that usually hold consoles as well as a bunch of other stuff. It really just depends on what I feel like putting on there. It's another thing that I find very convenient as I'm officing in my office. Lastly, I have these RGB lights that are under the console shelf. They can flash a ton of different colors and it looks incredibly tacky. I mean, I mean amazing. Honestly though, I usually just leave these off. And there you have it. And there you go, that's six of the rooms in my house. Gotta admit, it was kind of weird videotaping the, wait, no, I'm certainly not using videotape. Um, it was kind of weird filming well, I'm definitely not using film, let's see. It was kind of weird shooting. Yeah, it was weird shooting these rooms for the public to see because normally I'm a pretty private guy, so it's kind of weird having this stuff out there. Oh well, I figure some people must like it. At least I hope you do. Anyway, what did you think? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack.
Now that I stupidly showed everyone my games, the evil burglars are gonna wanna break in and take my stuff. Better take care to hide some of my more valuable possessions. Right now, where am I gonna put all this stuff? Gotta put it somewhere where people will be afraid to look. <laughs> Sometimes I even impress myself. There is no way anyone's gonna look in here. Wait a minute, this is the end sketch, isn't it? So, if anyone watches the end sketch, they're gonna know. No one watches the end sketches, I think I'm safe. There's always that one guy.